It's launch day at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The space shuttle is on the launch pad, the astronauts are aboard, and the countdown is clicking steadily backwards. More than 200 miles above Earth, the International Space Station is moving quickly through its 91-minute long orbit, leaving the shuttle a scant five-minute window to lift off or risk missing the orbiting laboratory. Inside the Launch Control Center, a cadre of some 200 launch controllers, all of them specialists in the shuttle and its myriad systems, methodically move through their own checklists to make sure that everything is ready. They work for days to bring the countdown this far to a point nine minutes before launch when it's time to decide whether the shuttle is indeed ready to launch. The person making that decision is the launch director. 22,000 parameters roughly have to be exactly right in order to, to launch the shuttle. If conditions aren't right, the launch director can scrub the launch attempt. Okay, Zambo, well, you heard all that. You know, we tried it real, really hard to, to work the weather. Um, it was just too dynamic. We got feeling good there at one point, and then it filled back in, and we just were not comfortable with launching the space shuttle tonight. So we're going to go into a 24-hour scrub. We thank you all for the effort you all put in tonight. We'll see you back uh, again tomorrow night, and we hope the weather's a little bit better. Sometimes a problem isn't seen until the last seconds of a countdown and the computerized ground launch sequencer aborts the launch. It's running, three, two, one, and have main engine cut off. GLS safing is in progress. GLS safing is in progress. Cap 101, DSS loaded to 102, LED shows one. Air test coverage. GLS fire detector status. No MBS fire detectors were shipped and our primary safety is. Ten people have served as launch director during the space shuttle's 30 years of flying into space. For each, launch day became the ultimate test of their skills and decision making. The, the essence of the job is actually to, uh, to say no when everybody else wants to go. On launch day, the launch director and his team can be found in one of the firing rooms inside the launch control center at Kennedy. He sits in the back row, facing a few monitors, and with the giant windows looking out to the pad at his back. Because his console is on a riser, he can look out on the other controllers in the room, many of them at specialized consoles behind horseshoe-shaped cabinets. Uh, we have to be convinced as a team, I have to be convinced as a person, that everything is ready to go. And so in, until that point, until, I'm, until I have the feeling in my, in my gut that we're ready to launch, um, we can meet every, every, every requirement we have on the books, but we also have to meet that gut check that says we're ready to fly that day. Nine minutes before liftoff, the flight control team in Houston, NASA and contractor management, and the other members of the launch team radio a simple go or no go. Myla. Myla, let's go. SCM. SCM is go. Safety console. Safety console is go. SPE. SPE is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. Then the launch director gets the last word in a tradition that goes back to the first launch of a space shuttle in 1981 when launch director George Page radioed to Columbia Commander John Young and pilot Bob Crippen. John, we can't uh, do more from the launch team than say uh, we sure wish you an awful lot of luck. We're with you a thousand percent and we're awful proud of being a part of it. Good luck, John. Uh, Trip and I are mighty proud to work with you fellas. You're, you're absolutely professional. The best there is. Um, it becomes very personal. And uh, I look out to the pad and I think about the crew on board and I have a little moment of reflection. Uh, and then the countdown clock picks up at T minus nine minutes. There were two space shuttle missions that took the launch directors into untested areas. The first, STS-51L in 1986 was the Challenger accident. James Thomas was the launch director, and Seek was on hand on that cold January morning. It was one of those days in hindsight when even though everything was within specification as far as the launch commit criteria, the requirements were, a lot of people had this gut feeling that this just doesn't feel right. 
NASA rebounded from the Challenger accident with determination, and the agency sought to fix its errors. Our resolve was we're going to safely fly again. It's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to get there, and we did. Discovery returned astronauts to space in September 1988, a mission Seek said gave a huge boost to the launch team. The start, in this case, or the rebirth of the shuttle program because the mission, the flight, its performance proved that we had fixed all of those, those items that, uh, that we should have fixed in the Challenger. In 2003, Leinbach was called into recovery service after Shuttle Columbia broke apart during re-entry over Texas and Louisiana. My job as the Raptor Response Team Chairman, it's another assignment of the Launch Director, is to take that first team from KSC uh, to wherever the contingency is. Three engines up and burning. Three, two, one, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Discovery, beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And the vehicle has cleared the tower. The shuttle returned to space again in 2005 with Discovery launching to the International Space Station. Launch days throughout the shuttle's illustrious program have always been special for the men and women in the Launch Control Center. It's what we do. It, it, it is, we, are, we are launching America's space shuttle for the good of the country and the good of the world. It's what we do. We have to do this. <laughs>